Hi everyone, I'm Chris Lodi. Uh, the sun has finally come out here in the UK after a quite a cold, wet spring, which gives me every excuse I need to talk about this, which is my synth tray. It is literally just a tray. Um, this idea was born out of the fact that we spent so long inside over lockdown and I really want to just get out in the sun and soak up some rays, but also I've got lots of gear I want to play with. Uh, I've gathered up quite a bit of battery powered equipment over the years, so this video is about how you can assemble like a little impromptu sort of mini studio that you can take out into the garden, or maybe just into another room, get out of the studio and just get some inspiration. So yeah, let's have a look. So here we have on the bench the empty tray, as you can see. Now, I actually made this, I used to be a joiner, uh, so I took a piece of old ply, as you can see, because it's got a stinking gaming hole in it. It's a 10 mil ply with a bit of edging mitered around the outside. I decided to go for something with a very slight lip just to stop gear from sliding off the edge, but mostly because of the connection placement on the Korg NTS-1. Uh, as you can see, there isn't much distance between the base and the connections, so it really does need to be very minimal so you can get your, you get your cables in and out. With that in mind, let's stick that on the board so that will come in useful later. Uh, it isn't battery powered, so we need something to power it with. It's, it was on USB, so power bank. The only power bank I have is a lantern uh, that runs on these stinking great big, I don't know what these are, these are rechargeable batteries in the base. Um, it has a USB out, so that's how we're gonna power our NTS-1, that's in the side there. But also, obviously, if you're in the dark, ah, uh, light. So let's stick that in the corner. Recently, I've got a Korg uh, SQ1 sequencer that runs MIDI and CV, which hopefully has a MIDI out that matches the MIDI in on the Korg NTS-1. So when we connect these together, all we need to do is connect a single cable from here to here, and the notes programmed into the sequence on here will trigger this, which is great because this doesn't have a built-in sequencer. It just has an arpeggiator which is okay, but it's limited. Oh, the other thing I love about the NTS-1 is it can process audio, so we can run a line in through here, use it as a reverb, so it's a nice dual purpose uh, effects unit, headphone sort of output if we want to run a line in into it, you know, and uh, if we program it with a sequencer, we can create sounds with it too, so it's a good multi-purpose. That's kind of what I tend to buy actually, is multi-purpose gear. This uh, also fulfills a number of things in my studio, and we'll also talk to some other gear that we're going to put on the board, um, but we'll get to that. So next up, one of the main reasons for building this was because I wanted to mess around more with the Korg Volker Modular, now that I'd bought something else that works with it, so let's get that on the board. So yeah, I'm sure you've seen this plenty on my channel. So this too, we can run CB in from the SQ1 if we want to, to get some extra uh, sequencer channels going. Uh, 3.5 mil from uh, one of the CV outs to here. You could also run a gate into it, get, use both these connections, and then um, run those cables around on the surface of the Volker modular to get all sorts of things going. But also, I recently got this, which is the Basel Castle, the 1.5. Um, this will also talk to the Volker modular. It's got the same kind of uh, pin header out configuration. So we need these tiny little patch cables. We can bridge connections from the input-output socket on the back into the CV and, and run cables backwards and forwards. Um, some people may be a little bit worried about the voltage difference between these two. This runs at 5. The peak of this is about 3.3 volts, but there's a really good article I found elsewhere that's uh, that, um, called the real Volker modular spec which goes into great detail how much voltage actually comes out of these pins. It can go all the way up to 9 volts out of the Volker modular. So there is a re really a big difference between the spec that's written and what it can actually do. So I've run these two into each other, no problems at all. With this in mind, I've also ordered a Basel Castle drum, but that is taking forever to arrive. I guess it's just because of the way the world is working at the moment, unfortunately. This will also obviously talk to these two, so we've got a little mini modular system going on in the middle of this board. Um, I've also got a prototype board. Now, um, this won't do anything on its own, but um, using these little 3.5mm uh, connectors again, and we can run connections to and from the Volker module and the castle. I can add components onto here. I'm going to make more videos, I think, in the future about how that can be done. Um, potentiometers and attenuators and just simple things even are really useful. 
You can even use it as just a multi. You can run a cable out into one of these lanes and then you've got copies of that signal to run back. So even with just a, a few small battery powered modular bits like this, we can, we can get some power going here. So in the demo, I was also using this um, good old Volker Beats for drums. But like I say, once my, my um, Castle drum turns up, I'm probably going to replace uh, this with that. I've used this on loads of stuff and I'm excited to try out what the Basel Castle drum can do because it sounds quite dirty. So that'd be good. So what else? So mixer. This is the only battery powered mixer I actually own. Um, it's really old, I guess, judging from the way it looks. I think it's probably late 80s, early 90s, but it runs on a single 9 volt battery, which is good. All this stuff so far, actually, uh, these all run on double A's. I think that runs on double A's. This one's on three double A's and these run on double A's. I have uh, lots of rechargeable batteries and chargers kicking around. I just invested in loads of these hybrid type um, nickel metal hard drive batteries, which once they're charged and you leave them on the shelf, they don't self discharge as badly as earlier nickel metal hard drive type batteries. There's lots of different brands that make these. Um, I've just bought this particular type because that's what I've used in the past and got on well with. But yeah, I mean, if you were to do this with dry cells, you'd be just churning them out like mad and chucking them in, into landfill or something that has to be recycled. So I do suggest you get rechargeables. It's a good idea. So this runs on a, a single rechargeable 9 volt battery. I did find that the there's line ins on the back as well as quarter inch microphone sockets. I found the line in to be really quiet. I don't know why, but when I run this into my recorder, which I'll show you in a minute, it, it just has hardly any sound coming out of it. So I found the best thing to do is run my signals into the microphone inputs. And it adds a little bit of dirt to the Volker beats. The, it kind of distorts that kick drum really nicely, gives it a bit of depth. So lastly on the board is my old Korg sound on sound recorder. Me and the missus were talking about this. We bought this back in like 2013, I think. It, but I still really like it. It's called the sound on sound because it's a multi-track recorder, which means you can listen back to what you've previously recorded whilst recording something new onto a new WAV. So it keeps stacking the WAVs separately onto the memory card. It certainly records at CD quality, which is 16-bit uh, 44, 100 hertz. Um, it takes a micro SD card, but it's got dedicated stereo line in, headphone socket and stereo mic input, mics built in and a guitar a quarter inch input. Not only that, but it works as an effects box. It's got like a hundred effects in here that you can select between, including some surprisingly good reverbs and a bit crusher. So that's good. You always got to have a bit crusher. So that kind of lives on there. One of the things that's slightly annoying is you have to be careful where your sockets are. So this has to live that way. Headphone comes out that side, line ins that side. And the same with this, there's the sockets on the back here that I have to get, gain access to. So I've kind of had to jiggle this around until it makes sense. The back of the Basel Castle also has sockets here. So we have to make sure we can get to those and these. But obviously your, your mileage will depend on what gear you've got to put on this board. Just backing things up a little bit to talk about mixers, I'm probably going to end up replacing this. Uh, there's some nice passive mixers on the market that are about yay big. That will mix stereo signals. Um, this one will mix two stereo signals or switch into mono mode. So you've got four channels, which is quite nice, but um, it's a bit big and a bit heavy. But this book will also teach you how to make your own passive mixes, um, which is really good. I really like this book. Uh, Nicholas Collins, uh, Handmade Electronic Music. There's really simple circuits in here. You could even build something on a prototype board. Um, so this is big and heavy and may have to go. So of course you don't need this exact gear. There's loads of different ways you can do this. Um, I just got myself a Microfreak, which isn't battery powered, but it is bus powered. So it will also run off the uh, power bank. There's of course the option to use a couple of uh, Sonicware Livens, which will fit on this board the other way around and they'll connect together using sync or using MIDI and they will accept a line in. So you can also boost signals through the headphone output. You may not even need a mixer. You could just attach a, a recorder to the end and you got yourself a little studio that way. Or of course you could just go kind of full on Volker mixer and recorder and do it like that. That isn't quite it of course, you're going to need somewhere to put all your bits and bobs. Um, that is cables and things that link all these bits of equipment together, adapters, that kind of thing. 
I decided to go for this carved wooden box, which looks a bit like a cursed family heirloom from a cheap horror film. Somewhere to put my 3.5mm cables and my phono to, you know, splittery things, and then all these little tiny um, pin header uh, connections that are for the Vulcan modular and the Basil Castle, and then a few adapters. And that fits in there nicely. Like that. So that's about everything. Uh, well done to you if you made it this far through this incredibly gripping video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and press all the buttons and things and the links and stuff. So see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.